bad as Husky. She's one of the finest numbers they are. Under thread per square inch. What kind of rug's that? Well, that's the storm pattern. Storm pattern. Storm that comes in from each side, northwest, east. The first time everybody was, I mean, everybody put it all, and yeah. And I don't know what this, oh, this is a snowflake road. Yeah, fallen snow. That is, that rug is very, very good rug. She weaves good. And then she made the same She really weaves good, actually. That's the, we, uh, I What's named, this one? I named it the Keems Canyon Diamond. Uh, even though it has nothing to do with Keems Canyon, but they, they they made it a lot of roads that way, and I call it a diamond, you know. Mm -hmm. so it looks like a diamond. Yeah, that's. But I those these are top. Oh, that rug is. Well, both all of them are. She's a hell of a weaver. <laughs> She's a crippled girl. She has one leg shorter than the other. Where she lived? Uh, just Grace uh, uh, Wood, right? Look, you've never been there, have you? Yeah. yeah. When you leave uh, Luca Chuka and you make the curve right there, as you curve and then go into Grace Wood, they live right in that corner there. I'm gonna read the book. Yeah, he he was uh he was uh he was a uh, uh, he worked for me at the store. And then he became uh, now her husband. Huh? Her husband? Yeah. And they they uh, then he became Navajo policeman. When they divorced and she married some other guy. Anyway. The, <laughs> and they were a family there, right by the store. Danny Husky, Gladys Husky was her name. She had one leg shorter than the other. A lot of those Navajos did. I don't know why that that come about, but she kind of, you know, as she walked, she. That leg was about that much shorter on her right leg than it was her left leg. But it didn't affect her weaving. Why'd you have her do this? Well, uh, she was doing them and she lived right there by the store. And I, I saw them right from start when they were, she was just starting. I had a hell of a time getting them. I finally got them. Well, you had this one especially made from that picture you had in the office. Well, yeah. 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 That that's, uh, that's, uh, that's what you call a snowflake pattern there. Storm pattern, I guess. Joe would get so mad. That way. <laughs> Patterns is a little bit different, but it's in Navajo land. The world, the, the world isn't round; it's square. So, did you see the corners? Yeah, four corners of the earth. Same here. See the four corners. Are the Hopis the same way? No, they're 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 just the opposite of daylight and dark. I'm going to take you to Hopi Land one of these days. That's pretty cool. You know, I, I wanted to go this weekend, but I couldn't do it. But one of these weekends, I'll warm out. But you come down, and you'll be interested. Uh, this tour, uh, this is over a, over a $20,000 tour. Uh, when we go around town, driving around town, he'll speak at Hopi. I say Nagurshway, yeah. That means a, a shady kind of person or not very shabby. Shabby kind of person, Nagurshway, yeah. And then he'll, he'll talk about the women and different different things about people. 
on the street yeah. or in cars. Do they still speak Hopi? Oh, yeah. And then he'll say, get off the phone, bitch. <laughs> That's a spirit. we don't need to go into <laughs> a lot do. of uh, unhappy things here. Oh, this is just secret. <laughs> family secrets we keep within the family. <laughs> He kisses people too when he drives. You know, the phone bitch. <laughs> and pelican. And yeah, pelican. Yeah, I, I've, pelican. I've changed from yes. bitch to pelican. <laughs> that's that's down under people. Right. I like to hear speak Hopi though because it's so. It's strange. a romantic, it is. romantic language. Happy, happy song. Mm -hmm. And they're they're they're, uh, they're a very teasing people. So I guess that's where I picked up this this teasing bit. With my How grandma. long did you live with them? Well, I, I started uh, uh, first place I grandmother went was here at Smith Lake, right here at Crown Point. We're right out here, and it's right out here a little way. Just walk over by through, going towards Albuquerque and Grants in that area, that way. And we went from there to Kings Canyon, which belonged to Grandma's brothers uh, and my uncle, C.A. Wheeler and McGee. Wheeler and McGee. Oh, no. uh, CA was a smaller owner and I can't hear you. Close the band because that daughter of mine's a loud mouth. Oh sorry. How long did it take you to learn Kofi? Just be quiet. Now where are we at? You just, tell, you just tell me about where you lived. No, well, at first we went to went to, uh, over here at uh, Smith Lake, over by through, right over here Street, about 50, 60 miles down here, <laughs> like the highway going from Gallup to, uh, to Albuquerque. That was the first story we we I first started and I and Grandma started I I. Oh, flower from my brother-in-law, Don Tanner, the white white rose and what the other one was it? White rose and the bluebird. L lucky babe. Oh, lucky babe. Bluebird and bluebird was a flower. He had a flower mill. In I haul I drove truck and got the wheat and then took it to the mill and they dumped it in the. Shoot. Tell him about the time that Don Tanner, you, you floated that trick of he says, who helped you? Uh -huh. About Don Tanner says, but who helped you go with that trick? Oh, I was a pretty good stud in my day. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and what happened? I got old. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Time to down a little bit. Crazy. How did you learn to speak Hopi? I don't know. It was. Ever since I was a little boy, I always was talking some damn language of some kind. I made my own languages up. As a little boy, we had a hog ranch out of, out of Gallup towards Zuni. And, uh, and we gathered the slop in at the, at the El Rancho, which was a great train stop in them days. In the trains, they, at the cafes there, we picked the garbage up. We had to wash the, sit down. I uh, had to wash the cans out and dump the garbage out. And then we had to sort it because they threw anything in there. And uh, we had several places. And we put it in that truck and went out towards our pig ranch out at my grandfather's and my dad's pig ranch out towards Zuni, uh, west uh, south of Gallup. And they had that ranch there and then they later on grandpa 
and decided to build a store in there. Well, I came back to the trading business again. And they, there, but my dad had no ability. He, was, he just didn't have the. I know that grandpa room. See, my grandmother was a trader. She was a Bingham, an Irish girl right from Ireland, strong headed. You know, you wonder where the strong headedness comes from? It's Irish. From Bingham side. Scottish. Scottish. No, I'm Scottish. We're Irish. Bingham is Irish. So, anyway, I started from there and went to Keynes Canyon. And is that where you started picking up the Hopi language? Yeah, that was the first I met it. And and we, I worked six months at Kings Canyon. Well, almost a year. Who was you now. working for? Uh, Bill McGee and, and C. A. Wheeler. Uh, my uncle was just a barely. Uh, his name was Clarence. And Wheeler. he looks like Ty Tyrone. Yeah. Ty Did they speak Ty Hopi? No. Uh, no. So, but weren't all the Indians there Hopi? No, we had both. Some? Uh, it was, uh, we were on the Hopi Reservation, but the Navajo <coughs> Reservation joined it. And we had what we called the um, Railroad Retirement <coughs> sign -up. They'd go out and work, you know, and then when they were laid off, they'd come back and sign and get unemployment. Well, you know, those checks were, oh, I think they were around 40, Five dollars, fifty, fifty-five, somewhere in there. Hell, it was boy, it was an ideal, and we had we'd sign them up, and then have the checks come there, and then we'd advance some credit on it when they come in. Like we collect, and hell, that on that day come, they payday. Yeah, well, it was payday, and then sign up day, and we had drawings. Yeah, they bought groceries and, and we had a, a, a slip, you know, they'd give, if they bought $10 of stuff, while we, or they paid their bill $10, we'd get, they paid $50, they got five ten, ten dollar uh, tickets with a number on it. And then oh. we'd draw and put up, I think we usually had three or four prizes, first, second, third, and draw. Wrong, and it brought people in. Buddy Tanner started all of this. So you learned it. So I learned how uh, how'd you learn it? By, by Just being around. I know, yeah. Well, see, then I went to Plackett, the trading post there. And we'd, we'd been there almost a year, and then they bought, McGee Brothers bought Plackett, yeah, the old Tom Politea, which was a there was one smart Hopi Indian. He started that store. He was very successful. And then he died and the boys were alcoholics and they lost everything. And they put it up and we bid and got it. Babbitt's Trading Company bid too, but we outbid him. Uh, in fact, we had a little inside information uh, unbeknown to anybody and, and, uh, and they told us Walked the bed and we bid it and got it. Tell him what, what, he, what you did in the store when you pronounced Hopi. <coughs> asked her if she, if she had to, you, you know, go in, go in there and, you know, remember? I know. So, so she had to go to the bathroom. Black is where you really started. Yeah, because they were mostly Hopi. Mostly. But we did started. Did any of them set, set you down and help you? No, I just, I, I, I had an automatic, they called me a mockingbird. They called me up on the mesa. See, the, you know Indians, they'll teach you all the bad words first. And, I, and it was easy to learn them. And I got a laugh, and see, that just enticed me all the more. And finally, the, 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 the head boys up there, the Kikmois, they call them, chiefs up there. Uh, there had been some complaints, 
because those guys would tease me and I'd say the words and they'd get a laugh out of it, you know. And somebody complained about it, so they called me and took me up on the Mesa at, the, at the Kiva. They complained that you were cussing. Yeah, well, a little beyond that. All the dirty words they were, they taught me. And I didn't know I was innocent. I didn't know I yeah, was. Yeah, just like in the story, you asked that lady if she needed to use the restroom. Yeah, I asked her, she, uh, and I didn't know. I asked her, she wanted to go. Uh, send them, uh, I asked her, I thought I was asking her what she wanted, and I asked her if she wanted to go shit. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, that store did. Oh, and there, and then they just all busted out. And boy, I just run out of there, and my face was red. I didn't know what I'd said, and my Hopi guy told me, damn, you said the wrong thing. You asked her if she wanted to shit. <laughs> <laughs> was it that close? Oh yeah, it was that. It was actually that. But see, they done it for armaments. Well, let's say it. Send them sheesh, no kick. That's what. You want to shit? Well, what was you supposed to say? Lola, my umhita now. What do you want? Hello. What do you want? But see, the little bastards taught me the wrong thing. So they took me up on the mesa, and this Sam Sheen was, he was one of the head guys. He was from Moenkopi. He was a Mormon. And boy, they were going to railroad me. In fact, they were going to run me off. And uh, they got up there, and they, uh, down in the Kiva, the Kiva's was about as big as this room, and uh, uh, had rock setters, you know, uh, kind of like bleachers, like a couch, and we sat on them. And so they started, and uh, and uh, this one friend of mine, he was ornery a little bit. His dad was the uh, Kikmoy, the head chief up there, and he was the one that was teaching me all this shit. <laughs> and so uh, this Sam Sheen uh, got in there and they, they made their complaint and he stood up and, and he asked me and I said, I didn't know what I was saying. They taught it to me. And so he explained to him. he said, well, uh, your own, your own uh, head chief's son and several of these guys is taught him these words. And he didn't know what he was saying. He thought he was saying something that wasn't was right. And I did. And they they excused me and let me by with it. So didn't they, they start teaching you the right words? Yeah, and then well then I start, I then that brought me to there that I better find out what the hell I was saying. I, and and that's what they brought up. I said, well, he's just like a mockingbird. We say something and he repeats it. <coughs> you know, they're different people in Navajos. Told me. But they're good people. But I can tell you, they are, they are Jaredites. The Jaredites did not all die in the Book of Mormon. These are descendants of Jared's family. They're laughing people. I believe that. You think that? I believe they're that. They're laughing people. Yeah, and they're, they're, but they are Jaredites. And the Navajos are, uh, they're different, you know. But I, I always said that the, the Hopis were Jaredites. They're different, altogether different. But, uh, people, and that, but they, where, where I started, was this guy from Moenkopi, down by Tuba City. He was a Mormon. And they come in there, the first settlers came in. That's Grandma's, the Hunt people, Grandma's side of the family. Come in there and they were there. And they were there and then they, uh, they was a little bit of, controversy and so 
the, uh, the government bought the Mormons out. And they, they traveled and they come over here. That's why we got over here. But, yeah, and I don't know. I, I think it was just a God-given thing that I, I learned that. I, I, I mean, it just, it come to me naturally. And Does your patriarchal blessing say anything about that? Yeah, it does. Yeah. It does. Yeah. And I will be among the Lamanite people. And that's that's really been my life. Yeah, yeah my life has been with the Lamanite people. But these are Jaredites, the Hopis. They're a lot more religious, aren't they? Well, uh, all right. What I'm saying is uh, they're Nephites and the Lamanites, yeah. They, but the Jaredites are... Jaredites, yeah, the Jaredites. Well, they were supposedly all, as I read it in the, in the history, that they they were killed each other off. Well, they killed them. They were a distinct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I guess that was what it was, but they wasn't. Some of Jared's people there. You can you can read it in the Book of Mormon. Their their ways and their actions. They even had they they had. They they had priesthood type things in there, like but very uh, like like the priesthood, uh, like, what? In, uh, like their kick noise, their chiefs and stuff like that was in that same line. But it, it they they got away from the principles of the gospel and uh, went that way. <laughs>